Welcome to part five of swatching all of my Ranger Distress products in one place. If you have missed the previous videos of this little series, then please check out the playlist linked below this video. There you can find all of the information to come to this state of the project. <laughs> I have taken this little wooden box here that comes from Tim Holtz and I have made a little booklet for each of my distress colors. And today I would like to swatch my distress glaze and my distress embossing powders and also some special things like this distress glitter here. We don't want to miss that. And for that, I want to take some cards. I have prepared these cards here that I can put into my little booklets. So the plan is to take uh, each of the colors that I have and of course put them into the right booklet um, and I thought perhaps um, I can show you that on a color where I have more products from one color so for example Uncharted Mariner I have thought I want to have something like we've done for the distress paints in the last video you have seen me swatching the paints and I have made these little tags that are clipped to the booklet with the help of this little clip here and that's really handy for me because I can take them out. So as you can see I can just take that out. I have here the paint and on the other side some splatters with the paint and in the meantime I've also added this little label here to know the color even if I have taken this out and walked away with it so that I can remember the color. And I want to have something similar for my embossing powders. And that has several reasons. On the one hand, I think it's really handy to have a card like this that you can take out and um, take to your project. Because often I'm embossing not here on my desk. That means it can happen that I have Uncharted Mariner here, my swatch here. And I want to go to the place where I'm embossing and then I can take the card with me and leave everything else here. Um, and another reason is this booklet is really versatile. So I can have this page here to see the oxide swatch made with the oxide ink pad. I can hold it like this and I can see the oxide spray. I can see the several pages separately uh, depending on how I have folded this and hold it to my project and I wanted to have something similar for the distress um, glazes and powders as well and um, the other thing is uh, I have the feeling that those distress embossing powders that make this distressed look they say create that weather-worn look, are not longer available. I don't know that exactly, but um, I have bought these secondhand and, uh, on an online flea market app, and I have the feeling that these are no longer available in the regular shops. And this is something that is a little bit sad. Please leave a comment if you know something uh, more detailed about these powders here uh, because I really want to uh, build up my collection with these powders but I really can't find them somewhere and I have the feeling that they will be retired or something like that so that means if this bottle is empty and I have the swatch in my booklet here then I have no chance to remove it if I can't get this powder anymore. Do you know what I mean? And if I have such a card that is loose and I <clears throat> put that below this little clip here on the back, because that's my plan, then I can remove this when the powder is empty and no longer available. That were my thoughts behind that. And um, then I have thought about what would I do with the powders in my real junk journal life as we did that with the other mediums as well. So for all of these things, I have thought about what would I do with those mediums in the junk journal reality in a real project. For example, here for the sprays, I have put several different surfaces to my little booklet here. I have a white surface, 
a coffee dyed surface, a coffee dyed book page and a black surface so that I can see the different reactions on those different surfaces. And these are the main, yeah, colors, I would say, and the main paper types that I use in my junk journal projects as well. And I thought about something similar for my powders and for the glazes for embossing. So that means I have first taken these cards here. These are regular index cards and I have cut them to the size that they fit here to the back. They are a tiny little bit smaller than the booklet itself. That means that is really handy when I want to put that in here so that it fits really well and I um, don't get any problems with taking them out and putting them back in here. So I have cut these down and these are just coffee dyed. That's handy because, uh, you know, coffee dyed paper, junk journal, you know, uh, I have lots of coffee dyed papers in my junk journals and I or I use lots of coffee dyed papers in my junk journals and that's the reason why I wanted to have something brownish that is made with coffee to see how the powders and glazes come out on such a surface and then I thought okay I'm also using those mediums with um, for example white acrylic paint crackle paste um and all of those texture pastes that are opaque and they are white as well so that brought me to the idea to take some white paint this is just some white acrylic paint Ooh, that's perhaps a little bit much <laughs> um this is called vintage paint i bought that in uh, a store called action but this is just some you know um acrylic paint and this is i guess some kind of a chalk paint you can also paint furniture with that but that doesn't matter i want to have an area here let me take a second card i've just put too much paint here i want to have an area here on my cards that is white to see how um the embossing powder and glaze comes out on white so i'm just painting one area here white leaving this coffee dyed and brown as it is and here we are going to apply some white and um, I also want to have a black area because uh, yeah you know the contrast uh, black and the powder is always really good to know um, that of course gives a totally different impression of the medium than on white. So um, for that I'm using some acrylic paint as well and I'm just um, putting that here to the bottom of my card like this and then I will just dry that with my heat gun and of course I need more than those so i have prepared uh, a ton of these <laughs> and it's also good to have um some more than you need now because uh then you have to do this step only one time i have in the meantime a whole folder with all of those things i mean those um die cut bases for the booklets i have already glued the papers um, to the inside for all of my empty bases and I've also prepared some more of um, those little tags that I've used for the paints. I've already prepared them that I have them at hand when I get a new paint or a new um, color for the oxide inks or sprays or whatever so that I have enough empty bases so that I can just grab them when I get a new color and um, fill the swatch so that I don't have to start with these preparing steps uh, from zero every time I get a new color. Do you know what I mean? And now I want to start um, swatching these and I have put them into a little order here. So 
we have one row with embossing glaze then we have one row with some special embossing powders like um, this vintage pearl here um, and some that are metallic like gold and rose gold uh, silver and uh, such things then I have white and clear these both glitters I know that they are no embossing powders but I want to swatch them as well because they are coming within the distress line as well and I don't want to forget these when I have swatched everything else and I have these in my shelf then I perhaps will forget that I have them so I will put them into my swatches as well even if they are no glazes or, or powders embossing powders and then I have some of these uh, embossing powders that have this really distressed and gritty feeling so I want to start with my glazes and to apply my uh, embossing ink here I'm using the em embossing dabber and I want to have a stroke of the ink here to get um, the powder really solid and in one you know in one continuous surface because I'm often using this kind of ink for some distress effects on the edges of my signatures for my junk journals so that means I'm taking all of my papers together to a signature and then I'm crumbling up the edges and I'm going over this with um the embossing dabber and then I'm just uh, putting the powder on so that makes a really solid thing and I want to have that on each of my swatches here as well but I also want to have some stamping here because <clears throat> stamping and embossing is something that I'm doing really really often so I have chosen this stamp here that comes from the faded type set by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz and I want to use this to stamp it to this uh, area here. As you can see, it fits not totally, but that's okay for me. I want to have an impression of, of this and not the total stamp. Do you know what I mean? So um, I will put this here to my acrylic block. And then I'm going to take the embossing dabber. And I'm trying to get... like this and then I will put that to my stamp as well like this and then I'm going to stamp this here like this and we are going to start with a vintage photo embossing glaze just like this Ooh, then it looks like this and I will put that aside to be able to emboss, emboss all of my swatches at once so I will uh, go on with the other colors in exactly the same way and put them aside and then later on when I went through all of my colors I'm going in with my heat gun um, and I'm embossing these all at once okay so everything is done all of my embossing powders and glazes are swatched and I would like to give you a little tip how you can label your swatches after you've made them on the ranger website there are some really cool downloads available um, especially for swatching and labeling your uh, products uh, this is uh, <laughs> one of the downloads i've just cut that down to be able to punch the little labels out and now I can take this so this is embossing powder faded jeans and this is the little label and I can just take this um, and I'm using some bookbinders glue to glue that down 
So then this looks like this and I can put that into my little box. Okay, so while I went uh, ahead and glued these little labels, I've realized that it's not a good idea to glue them. Uh, it's not working here on this rough and gritty surface, but I'm a junk journaler. I will just take a stapler. I will just staple that like this and then it should stay there forever. I think that even looks a little bit artsy <laughs> and junk journalish. I think that's okay. Next, I would like to go through all of the colors and show them to you in the camera here so that you can see how they come out on those three different surfaces here on the brown and the white and the black. And perhaps you see a color that you like, then of course you can go to your favorite shop and get that. Uh, so that's the reason why I'm doing that, so that you can get an imagination of the different colors.
oh, I'm so satisfied and I'm so happy that I have this here now. I can't tell you, I can't bring that into words what this little box means to me. I mean, it's just this little box, yeah, but <laughs> this has taken me so long to do, but it's so worth it and I know that already. Um, and that's something that I've experienced not so often in my junk journal life, <laughs> I have to admit. But I know that this will save me a lot of time. A lot of accidents will not happen with this thing. And I'm really, really excited to use that for my junk journal projects. Um, perhaps you've seen in this little flip through of those powders uh, that there are some without a label. That's because for, for example, rose gold and this vintage pearl and gold and that stuff and white and transparent, there are, uh, there were no labels on this download here. So I have to check the Ranger website if there are um, labels for these as well. And if not, I will make my own just by typing that into my computer, printing that out and punching it out. And then I will put it here as well so that I can put these into my little box here as well. And um, the same for the glitter. So I've applied the glitter with some glue. This is not totally dry, uh, but when it's dry, it will stick here. And then I will label those as well. And then I think I will make such a little booklet for the glitter colors. Do you know what I mean? So one little thing here that says glitter and there will go the both distress glitters in and I guess there will also go um, these more metallic thingies of the powders. Or perhaps I will make a second one that's called metallic. That would be also great. Or neutrals or something like that because we have the white and the clear embossing powder as well. Mm, I'm not sure about that yet. I think that this will um, grow with the time. Do you know what I mean? When I use that, um, I think I will find out what's handy and what's what not. And then I will decide how I will include that into my little box here. Whew. Yes. Okay. Oh, and perhaps, um, perhaps you're wondering why I have used these tiny paper clips for some of the booklets. Um, in the last video, I have told you that I have used these wider clips here to mark the paints. Yeah, so I have taken the paint swatch and I've included that here with the help of this clip. That means, of course, I can use the back and this little thing here to attach the embossing swatch, but... If I would use the same clip here, that would make no sense because I don't have the paint of this color. And if I would use the other clip and close that and put that back in here, then it would look like I had the paint. Do you know what I mean? So that's the reason why I have chosen the other uh, clips here. But perhaps th that is not the perfect solution. Uh, I have to think about that as well. I guess... There will come a video, I think I need a few months to test this here, but then there will come a video where I make some kind of a review or something like that or things where I think uh, that we can do that better or improve something or yeah, that kind of video, you know what I mean. Um, but I have to use this in my junk journal reality now to see how handy it is and to be able to realize what I can change. But you will get a video about that, of course, as well. And I will tell you uh, if I have made any uh, changes or something like that. I hope you like this. Stay creative and see you the next time. Bye bye.